Hello everyone, so this is a discussion for shareholders' equity and for this video, we will discuss the overview of shareholders' equity as well as the treatment for our uh, treasury shares. So uh, here's a handout, make sure that you download it um, and the link for the file will be in our description from this video. So check it out below. So for the definition of terms, we have our authorized share capital. It represents the maximum number of shares fixed in the entity's authorized articles of incorporation that can be subscribed and issued to shareholders. So ito yung pwede nating i-issue na shares. Kaya nga ang term natin ay authorized. Ngayon, kung hindi pa natin na-issue yung shares, edi ang tawag doon ay unissued share Capital. So it represents the portion of the authorized share capital not yet issued and is still available for subscription and issuance. Ngayon, ang question natin dito ay, kasali ba yung ating subscribe shares dito sa unissued share capital? And the answer is, tingnan natin dito. Subscribe share capital represents the portion of the authorized share capital that is subscribed but not yet issued. So, ang subscribe shares ay hindi pa na-issue. Therefore, ang ating unissued share capital is including your subscribe shares. Okay? So, ano lang ang hindi kasali? Authorized share capital would be equal to the unissued share capital plus the issued share capital. So, nung ibig sabihin ng ating issued share capital? The issued share capital means the subscribe shares that are already fully paid. That's why we have issued a stock certificate. It is the proof of ownership of shares that they have already fully paid those shares. No? Now, balik tayo sa technical definition ng ating subscription. For the subscription, is a contract between the purchaser of shares, the investor, and the issuer in which the purchasers, purchaser promises to pay shares of the issuing company stocks. Subscription receivable represents the unpaid portion of the subscription price. Subscription receivable is presented as a deduction from the related subscribed share capital, which is a contra equity account. So, pag sinabi natin subscription receivable, nakita tayo sa ating financial statement, hindi siya presented as an asset. No? Under our Philippine financial reporting standard, it is a deduction against our subscribed share capital. Now, we have various kinds of shares. First, we have our ordinary shares or called common stock under GAAP. It represents the residual corporate interest that bears the ultimate risk of loss and receives the benefits of success. So generally, ito yung kanilang mga rights. Pero sabi nga that dito, uh, no preference over other shareholders. Kaya naman yung tawag sa isang kind ng shares, preference shares. Now for ordinary shares, ano yung kanilang four basic rights? Attend and vote in shareholders' meetings. Purchase additional shares. So may priority, kung meron tayong bagong inisyo na shares, may priority yung mga current shareholders natin to purchase additional shares before we offer it to the general public. Ang tawag doon ay preemptive right. No? Then we have the right to share in the corporate profits or the right to dividends and the right to share in the net assets of the corporation upon liquidation. So kapag nagsara yung ating corporation, meron tayong karapatan na meron tayong share sa kanilang net assets, depending on the remaining net assets. Now, as to preference shares, kaya nga tinawag na preference, meron siyang priority na claim. Siya muna yung uunahin, either in terms of dividends and slash or net assets of the corporation in the event of liquidation. Kaya naman kapag nagliliquidate yung ating business, una babayaran niya yung outside creditor, tapos yung inside creditors kung meron man, then in terms of priority of owners, yung preference shares muna. No? Dahil nga sila yung priority. At kung magkano man yung natirang asset ng corporation, yun na yung pagpahatian ng ordinary shares after distributing to the preference shares. Okay? Pero ano na yung wala sa ating preference share? Commonly, walang right to vote ang ating preference share. Dahil ang priority ng preference share ay dividends or priority for net assets upon liquidation. Samantalang isa, walang priority. Pero ang kahalagahan ng ordinary shares is meron siyang voting type. Kaya naman, if you go back to your uh, investment discussion, in investment in associate, for example, diba, kailangan meron tayong sak 
saktong 20 hanggang saktong 50 na percentage of ownership para matawag natin na meron tayong significant influence, di ba? Pero yung kind ng ownership na yun should be ownership of common shares, no? Or ordinary shares, no? Hindi kasali doon yung preference shares kasi nga walang voting rights yung ating preference shares. So even if you own more than 50%, no, of your preference shares, we don't have control, we don't have any voting rights. So it doesn't mean anything. Kaya treated pa rin siya as ordinary investments, no? Hindi siya kasali sa ating investment and associate kung 25% preference shares. It only applies to ordinary shares because only the ordinary shares have voting rights. Inuulit-ulit lang natin para makabasado natin. Next is we have share premium, also called additional pin-in capital. It arises from various sources. No? So excess of subscription price over par value, excess of reissuance price over the cost of treasury shares, and distribution of small stock dividend. Kaya naman kung meron tayong par value na 5, inissue natin ng 15, then meron tayong share premium na 10 per share. Kung yung cost ng treasury share natin ay 10, nire-issue natin ng 17, ay di may share premium tayo na 7. Okay? And dito kapag small stock dividend, we'll discuss this more over later on, the difference between the fair value of the stock and the par value of the stock would be credited to share premium. Now, for the par value and no par value of shares, so ito based na rin to sa ating corporation code, Generally, meron sana dapat tayong par value. Ayan. Pero kung wala man, nakafix sa Articles of Incorporation, meron tayong assumed na stated value. Ang kaibahan ng stated value at par value, parehas silang nakalagay, pwedeng ilagay sa artic Articles of Incorporation. Pero ang kaibahan nila, yung stated value ay hindi nakalagay sa share certificate issue. Okay? Under the corporation code, no par value shares should not be issued for a consideration less than 5 pesos per share. The excess of subscription price over the stated value is credited to share premium. Very straightforward. Okay. So, <clears throat> under the corporation code, ordinary shares may be issued as either par or no par, pero hindi yan pwede sa preference shares. No? Dapat ang preference share raging my par value. Ano naman ang ating legal capital? Legal capital is the portion of contributed capital that cannot be distributed to the owners during the lifetime of the corporation unless the corporation is dissolved and all of its liabilities are settled first. Legal capital is based on the concept of trust fund doctrine. Legal capital is computed as follows. For par value shares, legal capital is the aggregate par value of shares issued and subscribed. For no par value shares, legal capital is the total consideration received or receivable from shares issued or subscribed. Kaya kapag par value, matic, total par value, yun yung legal capital natin. Kung baga, yung nakakredit sa share capital account natin, yun yung legal capital. No? How about no par value? Hmm. Pag no par value, lahat daw ng na-receive natin. No? Ibig sabihin, kung baga, may stated value tayo na 5. Wala tayong par value, may stated value tayo na 5. Tapos, in natin yung share natin at 20. So, ang legal capital kapag no par value is 20, hindi lang yung 5. Pero kung may par value tayo na 5, in natin yung share natin ng 15. Ang legal capital lang doon ay yung 5, which is yung par value. Pag par value, par value. Pag stated value or no par value, lahat ng consideration. Yun ang legal capital. No? At bakit ito ginagawa? Ano ang rule ng legal capital natin? Dapat kung magkano yung legal capital natin, yun yung minimum na ma-maintain sa ating equity. Hindi dapat siya ma-distribute at dividends. Para siyang reserve. No? Na nire-reserve natin itong equivalent ng ating par value or equivalent ng consideration paid kung no par value para sigurado na Kapag nag-liquidate yung ating corporation, meron tayong enough to pay off our uh, shareholders. Ano naman ang treatment natin sa ating share issuance costs? So, andito na examples ng share issuance costs. Hindi lahat ng cost natin na related sa share ay share issuance costs. Kaya naka-enumerate na dito yung examples natin. Kapag isa dyan yung lumabas sa exam or sa quiz, 
Anong treatment natin? Debit siya, deducted siya from our share premium. Of course, deducted rin siya sa ating cash. no? Okay. Pero kung hindi enough yung ating share premium, yung share issuance cost natin, ay charge against retained earnings. So let's go to our illustration. All right. So North Company was incorporated in 20X1. The following were the transactions. So January 6, receive authorization from SEC to issue. Okay. So ang gagawin na natin dito, idiretso na natin ha na uh, yung ating memorandum method, ano? So itong ating authorization na entry, memo entry lang to, hindi ito journal entry. So tutuloy na tayo sa ating January 6. 25% of the authorized capitalization was subscribed at par value. And 25% of the total subscription was paid. So if we will do the journal entry of that, debit cash, debit subscription receivable, and credit subscribe share. Okay. Subscribed, 25% was subscribed at par value. Okay. So we are authorized to issue 3 million 25% daw doon ay subscribe at par. Tapos, yung 25% nitong amount na to ay paid. So, 750k times 25%. Okay, or pwede natin i-reference. Ibig sabihin, yung ating receivable is squeezed in. 750 minus. All right. Next. January 31. We received full payment of 120,000 subscribed shares and issued the related share certificates. Okay. Ilan ba to? 600 times 25%. Hindi ba yun yung 120? Okay. So, 120 out of 150. So, hindi niya na-issue lahat ng ating shares. No? 600 times 0.25. Yeah. So, hindi lahat pala na issue. No? So, debit cash, credit, subscribe, share capital. So, kanina, yung par value natin ng 120,000 shares ay 600,000. Meron na tayo yung 25% paid kanina. So, ang hindi ba paid ay 450. Ito ngayon yung settled. Okay. So, this would be 450,000. And ito, subscribe share or subscribe subscription receivable dapat yung credit nito. Ayan. Because this was a preview subscription na ngayon lang tayo nakareceive ng payment. So, 450,000. This would also mean na pwede na tayong mag-issue ng kanyang share certificate. So, we will now debit subscribe share capital and credit share capital. Amounting to 120,000 shares multiplied by 5 par value. Okay. And then we debit. Cash subscription for 60,000 at 20 per share. Share issue once cost of 12,000 were incurred. So what we could do here para hindi magulo, debit cash, credit share capital na agad, Kasi cash subscription naman siya. So, 60,000 times 20. Okay. And then share premium. So, we have 60,000 shares. Issued at 5, par value. Pero yung ating cash receive ay 20. So, 60,000 times 20. 60,000 times 5, par value. So, the excess amount would be credited to share premium. Pero remember, 
share issuance cost reduce our share premium. That's why we debit share premium. And then we credit cash amounting to 12000 Lastly, we received subscription for 150000 at 25 per share. By the way, let's just write a date here. So January 6, January 31, in the Valentine's. And then lastly, Feb 28. Receive subscription. Hindi pa niya sinabi na nag-receive na tayo ng cash. No? So debit, subscription receivable. Credit, subscribe share capital. And credit share premium. Take note, ano? That we recognize share premium at the time of subscription of shares. We don't recognize share premium at the time of payment. So share premium is, again, excess. Yung ating par value is 150,000 times 5. So let's write it here. Tapos yung ating actual receivable is issued at 25. So 150 times 25, 150 times 5. And the excess is share premium. So this would be Feb 20. Okay. So to finalize our balances, we have share capital, 600, 300. Then we have subscribe share capital, 750 minus 600 plus 750. Then we have a share premium, 900 minus 12 plus 3 million. And then we subtract subscription receivable. 562, nabawasan ng 450, nadagdagan ng 3750. And let's put it as a negative number. Okay, so I just summarized the balances from our journal entries, which would lead us to a final answer of 1825500. That would be the total shareholders' equity. Okay, so that's our first example. All right, let's go to the next one. East Companies Equity as of January 1, 20X1 is as follows. So we have share capital, share premium, retained earnings, and then total shareholders, equity. And this is actually a reacquisition. Okay. So punta tayo sa ating discussion. Um, for this one, I think it's better na ikat train natin yung ating discussion dito para you can take a break. So, uh, recording of treasury shares as well as the uh, retirement of shares would be on a separate video. So, see you after a while.